thank you for joining me for another edition of Rivers of Living Water. You can get information about this ministry at abidinglife.net. At our website, you can get information about the church, the media ministry, the outreach ministries, the missions outreach, and various coming events. Feel free to send me an email, pastor at abidinglife.net. Hi, I'm Pastor Ken Miller, and I'd like to invite you to Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church. We are a growing spirit-filled congregation here in Sterling, Virginia, boldly proclaiming God's glorious gospel of grace, the finished work of the cross, and Christ's overwhelming love for you. More information is available at abidinglife.net. Come experience the power of God's word at Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church. Amen. And I didn't realize until this morning how, to me, that song kind of is almost a summary of what I'm going to share this morning. <laughs> but let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the word that you've laid upon my heart. And I thank you, Lord, that it is our heart to worship you, Lord. It's our heart to serve you. It's our heart to worship you, to honor you. It's in our heart to receive from your word the full truth and revelation of your grace and, and your love for us. And we just surrender the rest of this service into your hands, Lord. We do ask you, Lord, to speak to each one of us through your word. Speak to each one of us and reveal to us more and more of your truth and draw our hearts closer and closer to you, Lord. Help us to be receptive of your love, receptive of, of the truth that you want to share with us this morning. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, that every ear is open, every eye is open to hear and see what you have for them this morning. And we, of course, invite you to confirm your word with signs following in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God is good all the time. <laughs> Amen. So we've been talking on Sunday mornings primarily about the Holy Spirit. There's been several messages that I've, that I've shared about the Holy Spirit. All of that is available on a playlist in, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. There's a playlist that I've entitled The Truth About the Holy Spirit. So these sermons about the Holy Spirit are on that playlist. And today I'm entitling the message Communion with the Holy Ghost. One, one title that I've actually thought about using is calling it being in sync with the Holy Ghost or being in sync with the Spirit. Because to me, the idea of being in communion with the Holy Ghost, that, that kind of means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, perhaps. And there's a lot of different things that you can, can take from that. The, the main thing that I see from that word communion, you might be thinking of the communion ceremony, which, which we'll be doing. But, but in the context that I take this from, it's actually in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, where it says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. So in, in this context, it's not talking about the communion ceremony. It's talking about an intimate fellowship that we have with the Holy Spirit. You know, he's, the Holy Spirit is with you all the time. But I think that, as, as I believe I said last week, the vast majority of Christians People in general, but even Christians, the vast majority, don't even think about the Holy Spirit throughout the week, perhaps months, perhaps even years, without even thinking about the Holy Spirit. But he wants to have an intimate communion or, or fellowship with us. So there, there's, we're going to be on this verse a lot for, really, for several minutes. And there's a lot of things I want you to see here. The first thing, in looking at this verse, the first thing you might notice is you see the Trinity there, Right? You see the grace of Jesus, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We see the three. We see Jesus, we see the Father, and we see the Holy Spirit. And we see that each one of them is very important in this relationship that we have with him. The, the, the grace of Jesus, everything that we have in Christianity is based upon his grace. Thank God it's not based upon works like it was under the Old Covenant. It's not based on law. It's not about do's and don'ts. It's about grace. It's about his that unmerited favor. And it's because of the grace of Jesus that we have access to all that he offers to us. Not only because of his grace, but also because of the love of God, as it says here, the Father's intense, radical, un unrelenting love that he has for us. It's, you know, because of Jesus' grace and because of the love of Father God that we're able to have communion with the Holy Ghost. So what is this communion? 
of the Holy Ghost. The word communion here is actually a Greek word that you probably, I, I would venture to say everyone in this room have, have heard of this Greek word. Do any of you know what it is? It's koinonia. Have, have any of you heard of koinonia? Okay, so I, I thought you probably did. <laughs> so koinonia is usually or frequently translated fellowship. In fact, in this verse, this is King James, but in many other translations, it'll say fellowship of the Holy Spirit. But the, the, the Greek word is koinonia, which is an intimate communion and joint partnership. It's really a word that is a lot more intense than, than just communion. It's a lot more intense than just fellowship. Fellowship is a way that it's frequently translated, but it's so much more than just fellowship. It actually could have been translated friendship, but yet it's really a lot more than just friendship. It's an intimate fellowship. It's a partnership. It's like like being in sync with the Holy Spirit. I, I, like I said, I was thinking about calling this sermon being in sync with the Holy Spirit because, because that's what this, commu this koinonia projects. It's really being synchronized, being in sync with him and... So that song, So Will I, it's, it's like whatever he's doing, I'm doing it also. Whatever, he, whatever he's involved in, that's what I want to be involved in. If, if the Holy Spirit is doing something, I want to be doing that. You know, it's being fully in sync, having the same mindset, the same thoughts as the Holy Spirit, the same doings <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. Whatever he's doing, I want to do it. I want to be right in the middle of what the Holy Spirit's doing. It's being fully in sync with him. And I'm going to emphasize that quite a bit this morning. But it's an intimate connection. It can, now, koinonia can be used among people, an intimate fellowship like a family, uh, you know, like a church family being in sync with each other, being in, in close fellowship with each other, a partnership with each other. But it's also frequently used to talk about our relationship between God and man. It's a partnership. It's an intense, intimate rel uh, relationship. This word, this word really has such a multitude of meanings, it's hard to pinpoint it in one single word. There's no real single English word that is adequate to express the depth of what this word really is. But I want you to know, communion with the Holy Spirit, I don't know what that phrase means to you, but I'm going to be sharing basically what it means to me <laughs> this morning. But did you know the Holy Spirit is very interested in you? He's very interested in your life. He's very interested in what you're doing. But, you know, he's not only interested in spiritual things. He's interested in every aspect of your life. If, you're, if you have a major task to do in, in any day of the week or, or at any time, if you have a major task to do, the Holy Spirit is right there wanting to partner with you in that task. If you... If you're about to take an exam, the Holy Spirit wants to be with you as you take that exam and bring things to your remembrance. Like Jesus said, the Holy Spirit would bring things to your remembrance. If, you're, if you need to sit down and study something, the Holy Spirit is right there with you to help you to comprehend what you're reading, to help you to focus on it and to help you comprehend it. If, you're, if you need to sign a business deal of some kind, the Holy Spirit is right there with you to grant you wisdom to understand the full ramifications of what you're doing. If you need to buy or sell a house or buy and or sell a car, the Holy Spirit is right there to give you favor and blessings in that situation. If you're in a strategy meeting, the Holy Spirit wants to grant you wisdom. He's right there with you to grant you wisdom and understanding. So whatever you're doing, the Holy Spirit wants to partner with you. With you. He, wants, he wants you to be in sync with him but he wants to be right there with you to help you with whatever it is that you need to do. He's, and he's with you all the time. He's not just there. And by what I'm saying is what I'm trying to convey is he's not just with you on Sunday mornings. He's not just with you when you're in prayer. He's not just with you when you're doing spiritual things. He's not just with you, with you when you have those spiritual goosebumps, you know. <laughs> when you feel his presence, which is an awesome thing, but he's there with you even when you don't feel his presence. Do you believe that? <laughs> even if you don't sense his presence, he's right there with you. If you received him, he is right there with you. So, you know, in everything, I try to recognize the Holy Spirit with me at all times, no matter what I'm doing, and, and try to have a mindset where I'm leaning on him. And I'm leaning towards him to, to guide me and to direct me. So 
he, he's with you. He's in you. He's upon you. He's saturating you. Whether you're at church or at school or at work, at the grocery store, walking around the block in your neighborhood, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, walking the dog, <laughs> whatever you're doing, the Holy Spirit is right there partnering with you in that situation. Again, not just interested in spiritual things. But the, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. The Holy Spirit speaks to you in many different ways. And this is part of, part of the communion of the Holy Spirit is communication with the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we can speak to him, but he's speaking to you. I believe he's always speaking to you. And one of the main ways he speaks to you, probably the primary way he speaks to you, I shouldn't even say probably, but the primary way he speaks to you is through the word of God. But in saying that, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said he would bring things to your remembrance. As you study God's word, you meditate on God's word, throughout the day, the Holy Spirit can take what you've meditated on and bring it back to your remembrance you know, throughout the day, throughout the week, or even months later, he might bring something to your remembrance. But do you know you have spiritual senses? Just like you have five physical senses, you have spiritual senses. And you might ask, what do I mean by that? Let's, I'm going to come back to, to this scripture in a few minutes, but let's take a look at what the writer to the Hebrews said. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Let's say their spiritual senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Your human spirit has multiple spirit senses. Just like you have physical senses, you have spirit senses. And the Holy Spirit is always speaking to you, so you have, you have spiritual ears. You, your spirit can hear things. And, you know, as you pray, or even maybe when you're not in a, a mode of prayer, you might hear a word pop into your mind, or you might hear a, a word in your, in your ear. And again, he speaks in different ways. He speaks through the word of God, but you, he might just put a thought in your mind. Now, don't get me wrong. Not every thought that comes to your mind is from God. <laughs> not every word that pops into your head is from God, but that is one way he speaks to you, and you need to be aware of that. He speaks to us through all the faculties of our mind and our spirit. Just, you know, your human spirit can see, hear, and feel, and the Holy Spirit uses these to communicate. The, your, your, the, through the eyes of your spirit, a picture might come into your mind while you're in prayer. And it may even be when you're not in prayer, but this happens to me frequently when I'm in prayer that a pic picture will pop into my mind. That could be from the Holy Spirit. And again, I'm not saying that every picture that pops into your mind is from the Spirit, but it is one way that he may be trying to communicate with you. It could be a soft, gentle word, you know, the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit that we read about. Or it could be through your feelings. He might, through various promptings, impressions, feelings, tangible awareness, sometimes he uses things like, like a fragrance or a scent or a, an odor to speak to you. And what, do all, what does all this mean? It, it means that he's, sometimes it might just simply mean that he's making you aware of his presence. Maybe there's not real any not really any message in it, especially if it's a fragrance or something like that. Maybe there's not any real message in it, but maybe he just wants you to know that he's there. He wants to reaffirm his love for you. Sometimes he may be giving a, you a message. If, he gives, if, a, if a picture of an individual pops into your mind, maybe the Holy Spirit is telling you to pray for that person. You know, so he speaks to us in various different ways, but we need to be sensitive to his, the, way, the ways in which he speaks. But part of, part of communion with the Holy Ghost, to me, part of what that means is spending quality time with him. I would urge you to begin each day with quality time alone with God and, you know, an intimate, quiet time with him, soaking in his presence, not necessarily going down a prayer list or anything like that. I, I, I don't think that's the main point of prayer is going down a prayer list, but just spending quality time soaking in his presence, listening to him. Part of prayer is just listening to him. Try to gain an understanding of what he's trying to convey to you. And, and again, I know that a lot of us have very busy lives. Perhaps we have to get up extra early every morning anyway, and we just don't feel like we have the time to, to spend intimate time with the Holy Spirit every morning, but at least two or three times a week, 
find time to just soak in his presence and commune with him in that way. A lot of times it'll be a, a, a word that might pop into your mind. And it's amazing to me, again, not every word that pops into your mind is from the Holy Spirit. It's amazing to me how many people, maybe you've experienced this, someone will tell, you, will tell me, the Holy Spirit told me such and such, and it so contradicts the Word of God that I know it's not the Holy Spirit. The, God will not contradict himself. So if somebody tells you that the Holy Spirit said something, but you know that contradicts Scripture, go with Scripture <laughs> instead of what that person says the Holy Spirit said. And that's biblical. It's biblical. The Scripture says, 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Do not believe every spirit. In other words, don't believe every word that comes into your mind, every thought that comes into your mind, every, every prophecy that's prophesied, every word of wisdom that is spoken. I remember Kenneth Hagin once saying that a couple dozen people have prophesied over him over the years or given him words of wisdom, and I think he said only one of them was truly from God. <laughs> There's a lot of people going out there giving prophetic words that ju they're just giving Stuff from their mind, I guess, but it's not necessarily from God. I don't say that to diminish the gift of prophecy or the word of wisdom because I believe those are, or the ministry of a prophet, those are sincere, legitimate gifts that God has for the body of Christ. But just because someone is giving you a prophetic word, as it says here, test the spirits. There are many false prophets out in the world. There are many people out there calling themselves apostles and prophets, and we might say they're wannabe <laughs> apostles and prophets. But just because they call themselves an apostle or a prophet doesn't mean that they legitimately, legitimately are. Now, I, again, I don't want to, to diminish the significance of those offices because I believe that they are legitimate and they are from God. But I keep coming back to this, test the spirits. Does it line up with scripture? Does what that person says line up with scripture? And that's really the, the main test. The first test is does it line up with Scripture? But secondly, does it agree with your spirit? Is, does it produce a peace in your heart when a person prophesies such and such? I want to go back to that original verse, but, but I want to share it with you in the Amplified Classic. The grace, favor, and spiritual blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence and fellowship, the communion and sharing together and participation in the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So be it. See how in the King James it says communion. And I said that there's not any one word that is sufficient in the English language to, to express the, the richness and the depth of that word koinonia. And we see that here in the Amplified Classic, how it is sharing really several different words. Where in the King James it says communion in the Amplified Classic, it says presence and fellowship, communion, sharing together, and participation. So they're, they're giving you several words for that one word, koinonia, because it's such a, a rich word. So Paul wants you to know, what I want to emphasize right now is that last part, be with you all, and amen too. But let's, let's focus on that last phrase, be with you all. The communion or the koinonia the koinonia communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In other words, this is for everybody. This, isn't, this kind of koinonia fellowship isn't just for some Christians. It's not just for the spiritually mature. But Paul wants you to know, and I want you to know, that this, isn't, this communion is not just for a select few. It's for you. He says it's for you all. So it's for all of you. If, you, if you're a believer... This is for you. If you have the Holy Spirit, especially, this is for you. Koinonia communion. And that koinonia of the Holy Spirit means it's, it's a supernatural thing. It's a supernatural intimacy. Soaking in his presence. It's a supernatural intimacy. It's a supernatural ability to communicate and receive communication from the Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural ability to be in sync with the Holy Spirit. How many of you would like to be in sync with the Holy Spirit all the time? In essence, basically, you never make a mistake, right? If you're in sync with God, how could you ever make a mistake? 
I think that's part of what's wrapped up in this word, koinonia. And then he adds the word amen. Amen means so be it. Or in other words, truly this is so. Or it, it could have been translated, this is truth. It's like he's doubling down on, his, on this verse. Everything he says here, he's double, doubling down on it by saying, amen. This is truth. So be it. So get in sync with the Holy Spirit. You, you want to know how to get in sync with the Holy Spirit? I, I, I think part of what I shared as far as spending quality time alone with God in the morning helps you be in sync with the Holy Spirit. But there's something else I want to share with you. Get in sync with the Holy Spirit's motives, his objectives, and his purpose. Well, how do you do that? Well, let me share a little bit on that. Out of John chapter 16, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He will glorify me. Now, this is Jesus speaking, saying the Holy Spirit's going to glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So there's a lot in these verses. There's one phrase that I really want to focus in on, but I do want to emphasize again, as I've done in the past few weeks, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. If you're leaning on the Holy Spirit, if you're in sync with the Holy Spirit, you'll always be speaking truth. And, you, and when you speak the truth, of course, you speak the truth in love, but you'll always be speaking truth. And this is the heart of God. But what I really want to focus on is that, that phrase, he shall glorify me. He shall glorify me. You know, if, if my motive is self-promotion or self-ambition or self-recognition, I really can't have koinonia of the Holy Spirit because we're going in different directions. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. Do you see that? He shall glorify me, Jesus said. So the Holy Spirit is in your life, but he, he's in your life for the purpose of bringing glory to Jesus. So if your objective in life is to bring glory to yourself, you're going in a different direction than the Holy Spirit, which means you're out of sync. So what I want to encourage you, <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit isn't here to exalt man. The Holy Spirit isn't here to exalt me. Not really. He's here to exalt Jesus. It's amazing how many pastors where it seems like the, the whole purpose of the church, or it seems, maybe it's not the purpose of the church, but a lot of the, the, a lot of the elements of the church seem to be to exalt the pastor. But I'm not here to exalt me. I'm here to exalt Jesus. And, and I believe that this is the heart of God. If my motive, if my motive is to glorify Jesus, now the Holy Spirit and I are in sync because we're going in the same direction. If I'm here for the purpose of exalting him, if, if I'm here to exalt Jesus, to glorify Jesus, that helps me to be in sync with the Holy Spirit. You understand that? So that is the exact intent of the Holy Spirit. So when you're, when you're, you're more likely to experience the Holy Spirit's involvement in intervention and interaction in your life if you're in sync with him, if you're going in the same direction as him, if your motive is to glorify Jesus. I remember when I, I received the Holy Spirit baptism when I was 14, or actually it was two days before my 14th birthday, but I started, immediately started going to Pentecostal churches and charismatic churches and charismatic Bible studies and, and full gospel biz, businessmen's fellowship. You remember those? Full gospel businessmen's fellowships, which, which were big in the 70s and early 80s. And I started going to, to meetings like that, spirit-filled meetings, quite frequently. And I remember my mother telling me, well, first, before I go there, immediately when I received the Holy Spirit baptism, I really didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit baptism, but I started doing a, in, a, a personal, in-depth Bible study on my own, where I would literally spend hours at a time studying scripture, trying to get information as far as who this Holy Spirit is, what this Holy Spirit baptism is all about. I studied the you know, what speaking in tongues is all about and what the gifts of the Spirit. I did a lot of study on the Holy Spirit at age 14, trying to get more information about this. And, and, and at the same time, I was going to these various Pentecostal, Spirit-filled churches and Bible studies, partly to just learn more about the Holy Spirit. 
And my mother said, well, be careful because all they do is talk about the Holy Spirit. Well, my mother wasn't spirit-filled at the time, but she said, all they do is talk about the Holy Spirit. I don't know where she got that information because I don't think she went to any of them, but <laughs> that was her understanding of them. But I was thinking, well, good, I want to learn about the Holy Spirit. But, my, but I found out that they don't talk about the Holy Spirit. They talk about Jesus. <laughs> I, I started going to these meetings, and, and it was really kind of slightly disappointing to me that they weren't talking about the Holy Spirit. But they were talking a lot about Jesus. They were talking about Jesus healing and Jesus doing this and Jesus doing that. And it kind of makes sense now, right? Because that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to glorify Jesus. He's not there to talk about himself. Now, it's okay for us to, like we're doing, we're on Sunday mornings, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, primarily because I think a lot of people have the same questions that I had when I first received the Holy Spirit or when I was seeking. Actually, I didn't really spend time seeking the Holy Spirit, but um, I've, I've shared that testimony before, so I'm not going to go into it today. But I had a lot of questions that nobody was answering. So that's one reason why I'm, I'm doing these sermons on the Holy Spirit. But I just found it interesting that her understanding of the Holy of these spirit-filled churches was that all they talk about is the Holy Spirit. It's right and it's by the Spirit that our lives be consumed with exalting Jesus. And another scripture in the previous chapter, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, again he's called the Spirit of truth, who proceedeth from the Father, shall testify of me. So, again, in chapter 16, he said he's going to glorify him, Jesus. Here he says he's going to testify of him, of Jesus. So, when you're listening to, to the Holy Spirit, you'll find him talking about Jesus. That's what he's going to be talking about. Again, just because you hear a voice in your head, don't assume that it's the Holy Spirit, but test it to see if it is indeed of the Holy Spirit. Here, the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter, He's there to comfort you. He's there to help you. He's there to assist you. This scripture is another one of those scriptures that has the Trinity. It has the Spirit. It has the Father. And Jesus, of course, is doing the speaking. The purpose of, of the Holy Spirit is to testify of Jesus. Certainly one of the main purposes of the Holy Spirit is to testify of Jesus. I want, to look, I want you to see this in the contemporary English version. I will send you the, the Spirit who comes from the Father and shows what is true, the Spirit will help you and will tell you about me. So the Holy Spirit is there to tell you about Jesus. So when you're talking about Jesus, again, you can expect the Holy Spirit to be involved in your, in your conversations and in your activities. The Holy Spirit does, what the Holy Spirit does and says draws attention to Jesus Christ. So what we do and what we say to draw attention to Jesus Christ, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week. Our lives should be all about exalting Jesus and testifying about Jesus. That, again, that should, that cons it should consume your life to be exalting Jesus, testifying about Jesus. And in doing so, that makes you more in sync with, with the Holy Spirit. The same verse in the Good News translation, the helper will come, the Spirit, who reveals the truth about God and who comes from the Father, I will send him to you from the Father, and he will speak about me. Again, the Holy Spirit is speaking about Jesus. So communion with the Holy Spirit is, at least in part, it has to do with being in sync with the Holy Spirit. And if you're truly in sync with the Holy Spirit, you will be speaking what the Holy Spirit is speaking. You will be doing what the Holy Spirit is doing. And you will, you certainly will not have the, the objective in life to exalt yourself. Now you may get exalted as you're speaking of, as you're speaking about Jesus, as you're promoting Jesus, he might just promote you also, but your objective is not self-promotion. Your objective is promoting Jesus and communion with the Holy Spirit. It empowers you to be Jesus outside these four walls. Part of it as far as exalting Jesus, one way that this will manifest in your life, this, co this koinonia communion with the Holy Spirit, this being in sync with the Holy Spirit, one way it will manifest in your life is that you, you, will, you will act like Jesus. 
I mean, Jesus said you would do the same works as him and, and greater because you are his body, his flesh, and his bone. You are his eyes, his hands, and his feet. You are his mouth. You may be the only Bible that some people see. You may be the only word of God that some people hear. Most people don't read the Bible, frankly. You know, it is the, the bestseller <laughs> of all books, but still, most people have it on their bookshelf collecting dust. <laughs> uh, fortunately, now we can, we can, a lot of my Bibles are collecting dust, unfortunately, but I do most of my Bible study online now because you, can, you have access to so many different translations by doing it online. But, but you know what I mean. Most people do not read the Bible. Most people don't listen to Christian radio. Most people do not watch Christian television. So most people are not, and most people don't go to church. Church attendance is not just here. Church attendance is at an all-time low. I don't know if it's an all-time low, but it's, it, it is, on, I believe, at an all-time low right now. Most people don't go to church. And, you know, they, they may watch a few minutes of a church service online, but most people are not attending, and most people just simply are not getting the Word of God. And even those who do go to a church, a lot of those churches out there are not promoting the pure Word of God. They're not promoting grace. They're not promoting the things of the Spirit. So what I'm saying is you are the hands and feet and the mouth of Jesus. You may be the only Bible they see. You may be the only Word of God that they hear. So you can only... Be that way if you're in sync with the Holy Spirit. In, in, in the purest form of being the hands and feet and the mouth of Jesus is to be in sync with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who's responsible to quicken us to life and to make us spiritually alive and in sync with him. And there's one more scripture that I want to, well, actually, let me go back to this one more time. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the being in sync <laughs> with the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. This is God's will for you. He wants you to experience the fullness of the grace and favor of Jesus. And you can experience that because Jesus took all of our sins, sickness, and anything negative about us and nailed it to the cross. So you can experience the fullness of the grace and favor of Jesus and the love of God the Father, the, the relentless, intense love that the Father has for you, you can experience that and you can also experience the koinonia communion or being in sync with the Holy Spirit. And this is for every one of you. Amen, meaning so be it. This scripture is in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 and 17. The cup of blessing which we bless, is, is it not the communion? And again, that word communion is the same word. It's koinonia. This is the koinonia of the blood of Jesus. The koinonia communion of the blood of Christ. So that kind of paints the picture that, you know, we use the word communion when, when talking about what some people call the Eucharist or some people call it the Lord's Supper and some people call it communion. But the word communion is talking about that intimacy. It's koinonia. We have, we have, and we should think about this, I think, when we take communion, that this has to do with an intimate relationship that we have with him, which is one reason I like to do it every Sunday is because it shows the intimacy, the intimacy that we have with his blood. So let me start over again. I didn't get all the way through the verse. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break, is it not the koinonia communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of the same, of, of one bread. So the cup of blessing, this is not a cup of curse, it's a cup of blessing. God wants to bless you, it's all about blessing. He wants to bless your life. It's a blessing that God has for you. And I think you can expect God, the Holy Spirit, to bless you mightily as you partake of communion. There are testimonies of people who have received healing or miracles as they took communion. But I think it's important for you to get an understanding of, of you know, Jesus, when he talked about communion, he said, this is my body, this is my blood. He didn't say this represents my body, this represents my blood. 
And a lot of times people have a hard time understanding that because if you say this is the body and blood of Jesus, they, they're quick to tell you, well, it represents that or it symbolizes. But Jesus didn't say it that way. He said this, is, he said, and it, it's, look at all the places where communion is mentioned. And it's mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It doesn't use the word communion. I think this is the only place it uses the word communion. But you see it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and 1 Corinthians. Not one place does it say that this represents. This is the closest place, I think, where you might get that image. But it always says, Jesus always says, this is my body, this is my blood. And I think that what Paul's saying here kind of paints a picture of what he's talking about. It's, it's a, it is so intimate with him. It is such an intimacy with Jesus. It's, it's being in sync. Remember I said koinonia is almost like being in sync with him. So it's being in sync with the body, being in sync with, well, being in sync with the blood, being in sync with, with the body, being in sync with Jesus. So consumed with who he is that it's becoming part of who you are or completely who you are. <laughs> so, you know, in the Jew Jewish Seder, there were four cups and they're all fulfilled in Jesus. There was the cup of sanctification, the cup, cup of declaration, the cup of redemption, and the cup of celebration, but each are fulfilled in Jesus. In communion, we have one cup, <laughs> and it's called the cup of blessing. So receive the blessing that he has for you. It's the koinonia communion. And so communion, koinonia communion, is to be an intimate fellowship with Jesus, an intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and intimately relating to what he accomplished for you. So I always like to encourage people to think about what it is that you need this morning from the Lord. What, what is the area of your life where perhaps the promise, of, the promise of God that you're clinging to hasn't fully manifested in your life yet? You can expect it as you take koinonia communion this morning. <laughs> but it speaks of an intimate fellowship with not just, I would say it's not just speaking of that intimacy with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but it's also talking about that intimate communion or fellowship with each other. Notice that it says that we being many are one bread and one body, and we partake of the one bread. So I think this also is not just trying to point us to that intimate relationship that we have with Jesus, but the intimate relationship we should have with each other as a, as a family. You made us beautiful. This is Pastor Ken Miller at Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church, 10 Pigeon Hill Drive, Suite 150, in the countryside area of Sterling, Virginia. I'd like to encourage you to join us Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Again, it's Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church, 10 Pigeon Hill Drive, Suite 150, in Sterling, Virginia. Our Sunday morning service is at 11 o'clock. Join us in person or watch us live streaming on Facebook. God bless you. We were lost without you. We were dead without you. But you came into our heart and you changed our name. We were lost without you. We were dead without you. But you came into our heart and gave us a new name. Don't just be aware of him when, when you're at church. Don't just be aware of him when you're in prayer. The Holy Spirit wants to commune with you daily. He wants to communicate with you daily. He wants to have daily conversations with you. And this scripture, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, it's all based upon his love, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you. Amen. And the word, the word for communion is koinonia, and we've talked about koinonia a few times in the past, but one thing you might notice in this verse is that we see the Trinity here. Do you see that? The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, referring to God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost. And we see the Trinity in this as well as so many other verses in the New Testament. That's not what I'm going to talk about today, but I only point that out because, you know, I hear from time to time more often than I, than you, you know, it might surprise you how often I hear people say things like, well, the Trinity is not in the Bible, so we don't believe in the Trinity. 
or it, uh, people might say, well, that's an unbiblical doctrine because the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the concept certainly is. This scripture, you see the Trinity. The word Trinity is not there, obviously, but the concept of the Trinity is here, and it's found so many places in the New Testament. There are many other verses in the New Testament. The word communion here is not talking about the Lord's Supper, although we're going to have the Lord's Supper. We're going to have what we call communion this morning. Communion here is koinonia, and it's an intimate communion or a joint participation. It's a word that's often translated fellowship. In fact, if you have something other than King James, it might be translated fellowship. But it means so much more than fellowship. It also means friendship. But it means so much more than friendship. I heard one person compare it to like uh, you're so intimate with your friend or you have a friend that's so intimate with you. They, they don't live at your house, but they, they're so close to you. They're like family and they can come into your house, take something from your refrigerator without even asking, without even it being anything of concern. <laughs> It's like they feel at home. They feel so intimate with you, it's, it's like they feel at home in your presence. And that's the way we want to be with God, and we want him to feel that way with us, it's an intimate communion with him. It's an intimate connection. It's an intimate, it's an intimate connection between people, but in this context, it's an intimate connection between God and man. It's a connection that's established first as we're connected to the spirit of Jesus. And it's because we're connected to the spirit that we're able to connect to his people. You know, we can't really have koinonia fellowship with each other if we don't have that kind of intimacy with Jesus and the spirit of God. The bottom line is the Holy Spirit is interested in you. The Holy Spirit is interested in you. The Holy Spirit wants to be intimate with you. But you know, the Holy Spirit isn't just interested in spiritual things. That might surprise some people, but he's with you all the time, whether you're at home or at church or at school or at work, he's with you all the time. He's not just with you when you feel those tingles. You know what I mean? Sometimes we say, well, I feel his presence, and sometimes I do. But that doesn't mean he's not with me also when I don't feel his presence. You know what I mean? He's not just with you when you feel him. He's not just with you when you sense his presence. It's the spirit of Jesus we're talking about, and he says he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. So in everything, I try to recognize him. I try to daily enjoy his presence, and it, because I know I need him. I know that I can't do all the things that I need to do on a daily basis without his assistance, without his involvement. So I just want to encourage you this morning to be involved in communion with the Holy Ghost, and be sensitive to his presence, be sensitive to him, be yielded to him. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. The Holy Spirit is speaking. I believe the Holy Spirit is always speaking. He speaks in different ways, though. You know, you might say, well, he never speaks to me. He speaks to you. You may not even recognize his voice. Because what he does is it's not, always, it's not always an audible voice. In fact, I would say it's very rarely an audible voice. He's speaking, but I believe he, he, he speaks in different ways. He speaks to us through our faculties of our mind, our spirit, and, and even our body. So what, what you and I must learn to do is to be sensitive, become sensitive to his presence, be sensitive to his voice, be aware that he's speaking to us, and yield to God the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he prompts us, Perhaps he might just prompt you to pray. Other times he might prompt you to go do something or go see somebody or call somebody. So what do you do when you get these promptings from the Holy Spirit? You yield to it. And to be perfectly transparent, I could tell you that I, I miss it more than I get it right. You know, there's so many times when after having a conversation with somebody, after I leave the conversation, I recognize after the fact that the Holy Spirit was prompting me to say something. And it didn't really dawn on me that that's, or, you know, or, or the person said something and it was a perfect opening for me to share the gospel, but I didn't recognize it until after I left. So we need to be more sensitive. We need to be, and, and I say that because I'm sure all of you, if you're 
truthful, <laughs> could identify times when, when you were not yielding to the Holy Spirit when you know you should have. So we need to learn to be more yielding to the Holy Spirit. But I, I also want to mention, okay, we're talking about the communion of the Holy Ghost, but I want to focus on that next phrase, be with you all. That's also important. Because Paul wants you to know, and I want you to know, that this communion of the Holy Ghost is not just for a select few. It's for you. It's for all of you. If you're a believer, the Holy Spirit wants to commune with you. He wants to communicate with you. That koinonia of the Holy Spirit, that communion, again, the word communion is koinonia, intimate fellowship of the Holy Ghost, also means he desires to, to commune with you, but he also wants to communicate with you. But you know, this also extends to the whole family, the whole, the whole church, the whole congregation. That koinonia of the Holy Spirit means that there's a supernatural koinonia among the among us as a family. And I think that'll be brought out in another verse I'm going to look at in a few minutes. But the, the final word, amen, that means so be it. Or it could have been translated, truly this is so. Or it could have been translated, this is the truth. So there's no question that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost is for you. Do you believe that? Amen. All right, well, let's, let's, part of the problem, one thing we need to do is we need to learn to be in sync. I want to share with you just something that, that I think might help you in your learning to be in communion with the Holy Ghost. You need to learn to get in sync with, in sync with the Holy Spirit, in sync with his motives, his objective, and his purpose. What am I talking about here? Well, let's go to John chapter 16. John 16, verses 13 and 14. Verse 13 says, How be it when, the, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus is saying, he will glorify me. The Holy Spirit, one of his main tasks is to glorify Jesus. For he will receive a mind and will show you things to come. Now, we see a few things here that the Holy Spirit is supposed to be doing and does do for you and through you and in you. He says that when, this, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So, first of all, he's called the Spirit of truth. If the Holy Spirit is speaking anything to you, it's truth. There's so, there's so many people I know, and perhaps you do too, that are quick to say, God told me this. When you know, because it contradicts scripture, that it's not God <laughs> that told them that. You know, so there are other spirits out there, and the scripture tells us to test the spirits. But when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, it will be truth. He will not speak to you anything that contradicts scripture. So when the spirit is truth, of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. I shared with you before that years ago, back in the 80s, I, I knew of a, a, an Assemblies of God pastor that spoke to a free Methodist pastor, and he told the, the free, and you guys know Assemblies of God is spirit-filled, they speak in tongues, but free Methodist does not. So the, the, the Assemblies of God pastor told the free Methodist pastor, and I happened to be there and, and heard the conversation. He said, well, the only difference between my church and your church is that we speak in tongues and believe in healing. And the Free Methodist Church pastor said, well, we believe in healing. So then the, the Assemblies of God pastor said, well, the only difference between our church and your church is that we speak in tongues. And my thinking is, well, if, he's, if his purpose is to lead us into all truth, is the only truth that we've learned speaking in tongues, is that the only difference? If the only difference between a spirit-filled church and a non-spirit-filled church is that the spirit-filled church speaks in tongues, to me, it just seems like there's something, something lacking there. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you into more truth, greater truth. And there should be distinct differences, in my opinion, between a spirit-filled church and a non-spirit-filled church. If the only difference is speaking in tongues, someone might ask, well, what's the point of speaking in tongues? Just to speak in tongues? Is that the only point of speaking in tongues? Just so you can speak in tongues? Well, no, there's so much more to it than that. And that was one of my sermons last year, 15 Reasons You Should Speak in Tongues. But, okay, so he, he's there to guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself whatsoever. He hear that shall he speak. He'll show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit 
can reveal things about your future. If you spend time with him, he might reveal something that's going to happen in the in the day or in the week, and he he may he may help you to avoid certain calamities. You know, I regularly pray that the Lord guide me in the morning, that he guide my step, that he go before me. He goes before me. He's correcting all the problems before I get there. You know, he's he's fixing every error. He's solving the problems before I get there. What a mighty God we serve. But then <laughs> that phrase, I think his main objective, certainly one of his main objectives, is to glorify Jesus. And I mention that when I talk about getting in sync with the Holy Spirit, if my motive is self-promotion or self-ambition or self-recognition, I really can't have koinonia with the Holy Spirit because we're going in different directions. Do you see what I mean? The Holy Spirit isn't here to exalt me. Not really. He's here to exalt Jesus. And I might find myself getting exalted a little bit or promoted, we might say, but not because I'm seeking that, but it's because I'm seeking to promote the same person that the Holy Spirit's trying to promote. So you, you may find yourself being exalted or promoted as you exalt Jesus also. But if my motive is to glorify Jesus, now the Holy Spirit and I are going the same direction. If my motive is that I want Jesus to be glorified, I want Jesus to look good, that's the exact intent of the Holy Spirit. So now I'm in sync with the Holy Spirit. Do you see what I'm saying? You're more likely to experience the Holy Spirit's involvement and interaction and intervention in your life if you're glorifying, honoring, and bragging about Jesus. Because that's his job. That should be your job too. Brag about Jesus. Promote Jesus. So it's right and it's by the Spirit that our lives are consumed with exalting Jesus. Bob brought to my attention this morning, what was that verse? I, and I looked it up and it's in all four gospels. It's in all four gospels, so it must be important. There's a scripture, again, in all four gospels. I, if I had thought about it yesterday, I would have added it to, to this, but I didn't. Where it says that if you promote your life, if you love your life, you'll lose it. If you lose your life, you'll gain it, something to that effect. Exactly. So, so that kind of ties into what I'm saying here, that if I'm here all about exalting me, promoting me, I'm just going to keep running into brick walls. But if I'm here to promote Jesus, the Holy Spirit is here with us to, to promote what we're saying and to, and to, you know, to, you know, we may find ourselves being exalted, but not because we're trying to exalt ourselves, but because we're promoting Jesus. So if you promote yourself, you'll lose it. But if you promote Jesus, he will get behind you and, and join with you to team up with you. So he wants to glorify Christ. He wants to do it through you and through me. And life becomes exciting when you're glorifying Jesus, doesn't it? You get, you get the Holy Spirit involved when you're glorifying Jesus. There's another scripture in the previous chapter, John 15, 26, that says something very similar. It says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. So again, the Holy Spirit, his job, one of his main things that he does is talk about Jesus. So what are you going to do? Talk about Jesus. I remember when I was, I received the Holy Spirit baptism two days before my 14th birthday, and I started, you know, wanting to learn a lot more about the Holy Spirit and started going to spirit-filled churches Frequently, they were referred to as Pentecostal or charismatic. I remember my mother telling me something to the effect, well, all those guys do is talk about the Holy Spirit. And I would go and they wouldn't talk about the Holy Spirit. I mean, they would speak in tongues, but they weren't really talking about the Holy Spirit. So I did my own personal study and learned a lot about the Holy Spirit. It's not true that spirit-filled congregations only talk about the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit does and says draws attention to Jesus. What we do and what we say should also draw attention to Jesus. You know, I'm not here to draw attention to me. I'm here to draw attention to Jesus. It's all about him. So once again, I want to emphasize the Holy Spirit is speaking. He's speaking this morning. The question isn't, is the Holy Spirit speaking? The question is, are you listening? He's always speaking and he's always speaking about Jesus. Intimate Holy Spirit involvement in every aspect of your life 
I think is possible. And the, the real key is we need to be in sync with the Holy Spirit. And so communion with the Holy Spirit empowers us. It, let me put it this way. Communion with the Holy Spirit empowers you to be Jesus outside these four walls. Yes, I said be Jesus because you are his body. You are his flesh. You are his bone. You are his eyes. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are his mouth. We are to be, you and I are to be Jesus to our communities. We are, you may be the only word of God they hear from. Some of them never open the Bible. They never listen to Christian radio or watch Christian television. Many people out there don't go to church, or if they do go to church, they still don't hear the word of God. <laughs> it says, for we being many, we, we are many. By faith, we are many. <laughs> we are many, but we partake of one bread. We are many, but we partake of one body, and we partake of one cup. I know we divide it up into little cups, but, but the idea is there that we're partaking of the same body and the same blood of Jesus. I hope you hear what I'm saying here. So as we commune with the one body and we commune with the one, the one blood of Jesus, we are in communion with each other. This is Pastor Ken Miller at Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church, 10 Pigeon Hill Drive, Suite 150, in the countryside area of Sterling, Virginia. I'd like to encourage you to join us Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Again, it's Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church, 10 Pigeon Hill Drive, Suite 150 in Sterling, Virginia. Join us in person or watch us live streaming on Facebook. God bless you. We were lost without you. Hi, this is Ken from Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church. I want to personally invite you to come to our church this Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. We're at 10 Pigeon Hill Drive, Suite 150 in the countryside area of Sterling. Every Sunday at Abiding Life, there's a great environment of joy and love, uplifting music, an encouraging message, and free coffee and snacks. Maybe you've been looking for a church, or maybe not, but either way, we really want to see you at Abiding Life this Sunday. So come and explore grace and faith and meet some great people in the process. From just outside our nation's capital, from Abiding Life Grace and Faith Church in Northern Virginia, thank you for joining me for another edition of Rivers of Living Water. You can get information about this ministry at abidinglife.net. Feel free to send me an email, pastor at abidinglife.net. I've got to have, got to have, got to have the river of life. To have your river, your crystal clear.